Hey everyone, this is Connor Robinson bringing you another edition of the High Press, a special edition. I have a good friend of the show, one of my best friends, joining me today to talk about Chelsea's new kit drop, uh, which is the first of the Premier League teams to do so for the next uh, season, as well as the FA Cup final that they play against Leicester tomorrow. Joining me today, of course, is the man, the myth, the legend, Fonz DeFalco. How you doing, my man? Good, Connor. Thank you so much for having me. I love what you're uh, you're doing with Down the Block Sports. I'm excited to talk some Chelsea. It's been a while since we talked about it, but I'm looking forward to it. It has, man. It's been too long. Um, let's just jump right into it because we got Chelsea's new kit drop. For those who are unaware, uh, Premier League teams and most soccer clubs uh, around the world change their kit year in, year out. Um, their home jersey, their away jersey. Sometimes they have a third jersey for cup competitions. Um, so as you can see, Fonz is wearing a Chelsea jersey right now with the old Adidas. This was from 2013-14, like that season. 13-14. I'm wearing mm -hmm. the 1920 City home shirt. Those are nice. And I know, the Puma, it's like the first year that they did Puma in yeah. a while. It's nice. I like it. And uh, we're going to just put it over the screen here, and we're going to talk about it. Chelsea's new home kit for the 2021-2022 season We'll let everyone absorb that for a second. This is courtesy of Chelsea's uh, social media, as well as, I believe, Sky Sports. Fonz, what are your initial thoughts to that shirt? Personally, I mean, I like it. I, I like it a lot. I know um, you are not a big fan. You'll get to what you have to say about it. I know there's a lot going on with the, with the different like layouts. If you want to pull it up again, like I'll explain it. Like, there's like... The left side is like the the zigzag, and you got the checkerboard on the on the right side, or or vice versa. However, you look at it, I think it's really cool. The, what I like about soccer, the soccer jerseys, one they change every year. You don't really see that. A lot of other teams kind of do that. You see the NBA sort of doing it with their city edition uniforms. But like the the cool thing about it, it's just it's it's a little wacky, but I think it's like really like it catches the eye. I like it a lot. I like those wacky type of jerseys. Um, the number the number well the number three the sponsored three like on the front. I think it's cool. It goes with it. I do miss the old stamp song when it was like this. Listen, I know you think it's like a wacky and it might be a little bit too much, but I personally like it. I think you said that's the home kit, correct? That's going to be their home kit. So they didn't release the other yep. two yet. I can only assume the white away kit is probably going to be like the same design maybe, but again, it's going to be an all white. And the third kit is always, always very random. Um, so I'm not sure what that's going to be, but I personally think it's really nice. I think it's sharp, and I'm definitely going to look into uh, getting one of those. Maybe the long sleeve one. Maybe. Yeah, I, and I know, and I'll pull it back up for the third and final time here just so everyone can get a good glimpse of mm -hmm. that. I feel like the patterns just don't really match up. I, I understand, you know, you got like – I think if they did it one or the other, mm -hmm. that would be pretty cool. Um, what, if, what if it was the third kit? What if it was like the – because, you know, the third one's supposed to be like kind of like wacky, a little bit alternate. Like if it was a third kit, would you say it's a little bit different? But like as their main kit, like you're not the biggest fan of it is what you're coming at. Yeah, it's like Inter Milan's home kit, like where typically, traditionally, they were, you know, vertical stripes. And this year it's like offset, um, sort of like zigzag stripes. And it, it, it doesn't really look, um, I think the color is good. Like the color with the dark blue and then the light blue, I think that works with the checker pattern. It's just, or, you know, if it was one or the other, I think it would be a much better kit. It's not the worst that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Um for sure, I know United has like these zebra kits this year, and and they're pretty whack. But well, United can never get anything right, Connor. I think we both know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's for sure. Um, although they they have been having um, a good season, surprisingly. But let's mm -hmm. talk about the all. Pretty much, you know, we're coming towards the tail end of the season. Chelsea started with Frank Lampard. Mm -hmm. Now they're with Thomas Tuchel. Mm -hmm. um, you're in two cup finals. How, how do you feel about how the season has kind of changed a completely different direction? Yeah, it's weird because when, when even before the season started, when we did like our little thing, like back with uh, JDF, I was looking forward to it because he was there, former Chelsea guy. So obviously he knows the fans, knows the system, like knows what to expect from players and obviously from management himself. They struggled a, a little bit. So it was well, not a, lot, a lot of bit because he's gone now. So I didn't expect that much this season. I thought maybe it'd be like middle of the table and whatnot. When he was, uh, I believe, what was he, fired like mid-January, I believe was Frank Lampard was fired mid-January, something like that. Yeah, early and January. It, and at the time, they were ninth in the Premier League table, so like they were just like out of it completely. Like You would not expect them to like make it, not do anything really, just kind of just be in the middle of the pack, next season kind of re-up and whatever. Uh, Tuchel comes in, it's like 
night and day. I mean, you see, what was it, 17 victories since he came back? Like a literally completely different attitude from the changing from the top to bottom. And they want to play for this guy. I mean, it's it was very impressive to see. I mean, I'm not – I don't know if it's one of the better comebacks right now of seeing it all sports too. But, yeah, to see the transition from Lampard, which was – I was sad when he was gone because, obviously, like, I liked him a lot. Guy that has been there before. So – but at the end of the day, it's a business. you got to make changes. And they went with, they went with Thomas Tuchel now. It was like, was he, like 47? Younger guy, younger manager. He's been doing really well. Uh, I'm going to only assume that he's going to be there if, you know, since he made it to two cups now so far and maybe drastically changed the team. He's going to be there for a little bit now, I think. you got to lock him up for the long term, I believe. Players like to play with play for him. Doing really well. He's doing something right. So, I mean, you, you got to keep him around then. But definitely been night and day, I will say, with this whole transformation from Lampard to Tuchel. Absolutely. And, and I remember watching around that time where, you know, Tuchel made it to the Champions League final last year with PSG. So he's not a bad manager. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's they've, they've had quiet success. I mean, right now, 64 points, two off Leicester for third place. I said, Chelsea, we're going to make top four this season. I, I mean, realistically, you could even finish second if things go wrong for United. Um, they have a lot of things going on with, with the protest against the Glazer family. But <laughs> I mean, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's a whole other video we could do. But <laughs> Chelsea going into play Leicester City tomorrow, FA Cup final. Yep. You know, you just beat City 2-1, Real Madrid 2-0. I mean, how are you feeling going into a cup final? You think this is the first piece of silverware this year? I definitely, I think we're definitely confident. I think it's definitely going forward. I mean, we're definitely on the, like you said, we beat um, like Man City to get to the FA Cup. I know you're a little bit upset by it. Uh, beat uh, she- uh, Sheffield in the in the quarterfinals, Barnes uh, Barnsley in the round before that, if I'm not mistaken. All good stuff. I mean, if Frank Lampard was still there. I really would have not I would have not known how far I would have made it to, champ, to the not Champions League, the FA Cup to the final. I don't know if we'd even be here tomorrow. But I'm definitely excited. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a good one. I know Leicester City, they're they're a tough team too. Ever since that um they made the they came out of nowhere and won the table. What was it? it seems like oh so long ago. Remember we were uh, 15, 16, yeah. We were, we were in college and we all didn't expect them to make yep. it that far. But no, they've still been they've been still in a hot streak since then. So I mean it's gonna be a, a tough game, but I'm Maybe just me as a Chelsea fan. I'm looking forward to the victory here. Um, will it be a close game, probably. I mean, when you have the champ, when like a Champions final or the final of any tournament, it's going to be. A, you want it to be a tough and exciting game. You don't want it to be a blowout. It may be a little bit boring, but I'm very confident, especially with Tuchel now. I think definitely change the culture in Chelsea. It's going to be going to be very good. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it'll be a great game, especially with Leicester's pace on the counter. You know, Chelsea's defensive system now is very rigid. Um, the Champions League final has been moved from Istanbul to Portugal at the Estadio do Dragao in Porto, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. What do you What do you think? I know that's a couple of weeks out, but what do you think of the Champions League? Just kind of early thoughts. I mean, again, made it to. The, I mean, another uh, another final here. Got to prepare ourselves. Tuchel. I mean, if he can win FA Cup and the Champions League. Especially a guy who came in in January, was it January, or February, March, April. Um, May, so it's been four months really since his firing. And what, what's Champions League? What is it? It's a month after a couple of weeks. We'll say like five, four or five months. Yeah, to, it's the 27th of this to, month. To, to, to win two championships or two tournaments in the span of five months since you came in, really. Uh, and then this is not Tuchel's like first time really coaching, but I'm saying coaching a bigger team like Chelsea. That's going to be really good. I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to that. I'm going to focus on the FA Cup, watch that a little bit. And then once. Uh, Get the win or loss or whatever, then you got to focus on the Champions League. So I think you got to, at least for the team, focus on the FA Cup for now. Get that victory. Try to win for the for Chelsea, and then move on to the Champions League. But again, I keep giving credit to Torkel here for literally coming in here, taking a team that we that no one knew what was going to happen because Lampard was gone, and now they're into uh, Cup Finals. So really awesome stuff. Yeah, he's done a great job, and and we'll definitely do another video when it gets a little Mm -hmm. bit closer um but final question if chelsea win the champions league it'll i mean i'll be upset as a city fan but of course you will (laughs) having having beat arsenal i think what two three years ago in the europa league final four one Mm -hmm. having already won a champions league this would be the second does chelsea become the biggest club in london well, you know how you know how I feel about this one, Connor. I mean, Connor, don't want to ask me this. I, I mean, I believe so. If you win both those, if you live in both FA and uh, and Champions League, I think so. I mean, you have to, right? Especially with what you've been 
again, I'll go back to it, especially since what happened. You came in at really at a lower level, struggling a lot. Duco comes in, wins those 17 games, gets in those two, those cup finals. I think if they win both, then yes. But if they go one and one, they'll still they'll definitely be up there. But I mean, if they win both those leagues or both those tournaments, I keep saying league tournaments, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I think they become one of the, the the top team in London. I know you're thinking, Fonz, you're crazy, but hey, you know what? You know, if you know, you know, Connor, all right? If you know, if you know, you know, go blues, baby. The reason I bring it up is because I, I was watching a video and, you know, historically speaking, Chelsea have the most Champions Leagues already in London. Yeah. So having a second one would be absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll go ahead and wrap things up there. Fonz, make sure you check him out at the Slickback Kickback Report, JDF Sports. Fonz, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. So, all right, so we just released an episode for the Slick Back Kickback Report. It was a 30-minute solo when I talked about the Knicks and the Ravens and a couple of things going on. DK Metcalf is a man amongst boys. I'm assuming he's not a human being. Um, you saw that run he had in the 100-meter dash. He literally unbelievable freak athlete. Talk about Tim Tebow a little bit in the passing of Colt Brennan, Hawaii quarterback. Kids kids out there, you should watch his highlight tapes. He was so good at Hawaii. And for JDS Sports, we're doing a, we have a wrestling show called Four Corners, me, Mike DeSanto, and Albert Donor. Took a little bit of a break, a little bit of an off-season for us, kind of rebrand some things. We're going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks, but so definitely check out JDS Sports to see when Four Corners is coming back. And Slick Back, Kick Back, Report, wherever you get your podcasts. It's Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Overcast, the whole deal, Google Podcasts. We're on YouTube also when there's guests on the show, at Fonz DeFalco on YouTube. Just hit 100 subscribers. I saw. Well. Congratulations. Man. Thank you. Thank you. So, it, uh, again, smaller, small stuff, but you know what? It's, it's growing. So, uh, definitely check all that stuff out and check everything else with Connor right here, man. He's been doing some good stuff, some good. I uh, was the, the high press, the mm -hmm. high press for Connor Robinson, making it big, man. Let me tell you. And Thank I got to come back here. I'm not coming back if they lose. I, I will come back and I'll crush them. But um, I, I, I had, when you said that, you said I wanted to, you wanted me to come on here to one to talk jerseys and Chelsea. I was like, you know what? Definitely, I got to get on here. This is my first appearance on Down the Block, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? Yeah. The first of many, hopefully. I hope I'm allowed back. That's the question. absolutely no. We we would love to have you come back. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love, you know, it'd be great. But we'll wrap things up there. Yeah. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, smack that notification bell, leave a comment below, tell us what you think about the Chelsea jersey, and of course, stay tuned. We are going to do more jersey drops, more yes. kit drops as okay. they come available. And, and we'll question. do. Question. Yes. Question. What player should I get for Chelsea? I didn't mean to cut you off. What what player for Chelsea should I get? I'm thinking. Obviously, either Christian Pulsic or or Tammy Abraham. I'm not too sure which one to go for. I don't know. What, Ch what Chelsea player do I I don't want to go playing. I got to get a player on here, too. Pulisic or Mason Mount? Mason Mason Mount's another one, too, I'm thinking. Because um, he's been he's been class. Like, you know, he I'm like, I'm he still, should be going to the Euros this year. I, I'm still high on, on ta Tammy. That's why. That's why I'm thinking yeah. about it. But, but Pulisic also could be on there, too. I don't know. Maybe because he is an American player. I got to represent, you know? The good old US Absolutely. Bay. Yeah, we'll 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 get you a kit. Well, I won't get it for you. Can you get me a kit? Don't get me Kurt Zuma. I'll hate you for it. <laughs> oh, now I'm getting you Zuma. He's still in Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just... <laughs> well, everyone, again, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna wrap things up there. Fonz, thanks for joining me, and uh, have a good day, afternoon, evening, whatever it is. Cheers, everyone.